I'll do is head back to camp, pick up my headlamp because it's starting to get dark, and then we'll go check out the swamp. So I was about to head for the swamp and I was putting a few sticks on the fire to see if it would get going again. And I thought, you know what, instead of messing around with all these little sticks all night, where it only burns for 10 minutes. You know, I collected those logs. Let's just saw it up, split some and put it on the fire and stop playing around. So now I've got a real fire, one that'll burn for a long time. Or at least I'll have some good coals that'll be easy to start again. So now let's go to the swamp. The heck is that? Oh, that's my own stake rope blowing in the dark. Cool. So tonight we have the storm headlamp. One I usually prefer to carry. Bomb proof, waterproof, batteries last forever. In my hand right now is the Through Night TC12 V2. Pretty dang bright. It's pretty small and lightweight. I like it. So it's a Through Night. And then then for my EDC, which is always in my pocket, I've got this Olight SR2 baton. This is the orange. And it's dang bright also. And this is my EDC because it's so small and powerful. Now I definitely wanted to show you this tree. Check this out. Those are all spikes. There's no climbing that tree. I mean, those are, look at, look at the length of the, some of those spikes. It's like almost 10 inches long there. Yeah, you don't think it's easy to get lost out here? That's the second time. Third time, actually, I passed by that. And that feature right there. See, you start to get turned around. Somehow I wound up going around that way, trying to explore, and just went in a circle. Now I have to seriously consider where I am. Dang. Yeah, it's easy to get lost out of here. That ain't no joke. Now I know I'm lost. I haven't seen those before. Horse apples. Horse apple. Where the heck am I? See a reflector, maybe that goes. Well, gee whiz. All right, I'm gonna have to pull out my compass and find out which direction I'm traveling now to leave the swamp here. Oh boy. All right, no kidding, I'm actually lost. But that piece of trash, I remember saying it points the direction I need to go back. It's funny because I'm thinking I need to go back on that side, but that's where all the 
that's where all the uh, bamboo is. And I didn't go through any bamboo and it's kind of clear on this side. And I can see a couple of reflectors. So I'm going to go for it. And come over to these woods. Matter of fact, if I go that way, and then to the right, I think that might be it. I'll just have to watch where I come in, or watch where I go out, so I can get back. I'm gonna try to go up this way. See if I see any familiar landmarks. Very interesting, getting lost. Getting lost. Just don't panic and of course I've got my compass. I can go dead set in one direction and get to the Forest Service Road, but I'd much rather just find my camp. There's two reflectors, but no telling what those mean. Two reflectors right there, one right there. You know what? This kind of looks familiar in the sense that there's a lot of reflectors. I came from this semi-clearing right there. Important thing is I can get back to the swamp. Right, it's going to be hard to get lost because I'm following this little creek and I can get back to the swamp pretty easily from that and I can smell fatwood burning isn't that interesting and is this the creek oh wait look at that tree that looks like one of the trees that I wanted to cut down there's the big, big pine tree way down there that's leaning. Big, big pine tree. So my camp is right here. Oh, yes. Yes, I recognize that. That has got to be the right one. Then that big pine tree. So yeah, I was actually lost, but, ta-da, look at that. I could smell the fire burning. I definitely couldn't see the flame though. Flame was too small. I just watched a video this week from Really Big Monkey One from Dave about survival situations and getting lost. And uh, he brought up a lot of good points on that video. And I tell you, I was actually lost there for a minute. But it's about not panicking, and I was able to find my way because of landmarks. I was familiar with the vegetation I had gone through, so I knew where I should not go. And I remembered that little little piece of trash in the swamp. I remember walking by it and said, that's pointing the way back to camp. So I remembered that. I could smell the fire. I was following a creek. I didn't know if that was the right creek to follow. But I was smelling the fire. You know, I had a good feeling. 
but I knew my way back to the swamp, and that's what's important because that's where I got lost. I had to be able to get back to the swamp. And then if all else failed, I could pull out my compass and find my way back to the Forest Service Road, which might be a long hike, but once I was there, I could hike down to my truck and then from there get back to the camp. But had I panicked, no telling where I would have went. If I just started going through the woods thinking I was right, because actually, for a while I was thinking, well, I need to go to my right. But I was heading in the wrong direction. And if I had gone right, I would have gone deep into the woods and I would have been lost in no time. And then when I finally decided to break out my compass and head to the Forest Service Road, it could have potentially been an all-night hike. So, that was pretty cool. I've been lost before, that wasn't the first time. I've probably been lost a lot of times, I just didn't know it. Lovely. So I've got some fat wood burning. So it'll burn for hours probably. Well, I'm gonna hit the sack. See you tomorrow. Another beautiful morning. So I slept fairly well last night. It's probably 7.30 to 8.30 right now. And I'm gonna have some breakfast and then I'll get the fire going and then I'll have another breakfast. Let's get busy. So what I'll do is I'll make some milk. Then I'll add my super powder. This is Ovaltine um, whey protein powder, powdered vegetables, and powdered beets. Mess that up. Got it lit anyway. All right, so let's do a gear check while I pack everything up. Got my Chill Gorilla tarp, friendly Swede mosquito net, the Nemo sleeping pad, cotton blanket, inflatable pillow and snake bag. So that's my bedding right there. That's my cover and my bedding. Well, plus this tarp, six by eight tarp. 
Got my silky saw and the Holtzbrook axe. Got a pair of gloves, sunglasses. Got my flashy, flashy light. So I've got my filming, filming light. Lights up the camp at night. I got a, got a bundle of 550. Got my FLIR, FLIR infrared. Cell phone, which has been off because there's no signal out here. My military canteen, which doubles as a cooking set. I brought quite a bit of food here. Uh, that's something I'm gonna have later bacon and I've got hot cocoa oatmeal that powdered mix that I had earlier a simple sensations freeze-dried more hot cocoa I have that first strike energy bar from that MRE some spices can opener scouring pad and a granola bar I've got my water purification kit. I've got my compass right here. My black diamond storm, which I was wearing last night. Mosquito head net. I didn't know how bad the mosquitoes were going to be or what the deal was. So I tried to bring that. Fire starting kit. When all else fails, I've got a lighter, matches, tinder. And this is where I keep my cordage. I've got some bank line. And this is where that extra 550 goes. My schmog, a sharpening stone. Multi-tool and my emergency whistle. Right in the rain notepad, permanent marker and a pencil. I've got some bungee cords and some camouflage face paint and a little bit of camouflage wrap. Now if you're wondering why I carry this, then you've never seen Red Dawn. Alright, so in the side pocket, this is my toiletries kit. I've got some isopropyl alcohol, my mini toothbrush, N95 mask, um, toilet paper, and some wet, wet wipes. Again, there's the um, through night flashlight. Got some extra Ziploc bags. And this is my little um, friction fire block. It's a piece of fat wood. Real thin and real lightweight. Over in this side pocket, I have my camera batteries, and there's another flashlight, the Olight Seeker 2. I brought plenty of light. I don't like to be without light if something happens. Or, you know, one of the flashlights, the battery dies, or something like that. I don't like playing that game. So in the front pocket here, my trowel, sniper veil, and a real light, ultra light uh, dry bag. Why do I have a sniper veil? Again, referred to Red Dawn, not the new one. 
All right, so in the main compartment here, I have the clean canteen and cup, poncho. I brought a clean pair of underwear, socks, and a shirt. There's no telling what it was going to be like out here after that tropical storm, and it could have been raining. And, and there's another granola bar. Stick that in my food. And of course I do have the the water bladder in there. And I've got some maps of the area. And that's it. Some greasy, flavorful bacon is just right for a morning like this. It's so damp, so humid, a little bit chilly. Bacon. Oh my gosh, I went to burn the ba bacon package. And uh, it started to burn and I realized, holy mackerel, there's another layer of bacon in there. And it's hot now just from sitting on that fire. Extra bacon. Yeah, two layers in that package. Awesome. Mmm. Oh yeah, I can feel the weight difference. With most of that water gone. Some of that food gone. Do some exploring. Now there's a huge spider up there. Let's see if I can get it lower. I'll be back on the trail soon. So thanks for watching Survival Theory. Please share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.